everybody would agree that uh, it should be less violent at times mm -hmm. uh, for the good uh, uh, of civil society and the government, but in the end also for the good of democracy in this country. Mm -hmm. Dr. Minardos, uh, now, as you said, the foundation has been active in Egypt for more than 30 years now. Now, after the uh, giant 25th revolution, does the foundation see the dynamics in the, in the, in the political life here in Egypt change? Did, uh, is, it, is it more favorable towards the, the change that it has become or the, uh, the way it was before? And as you've mentioned, there's a lot of talk uh, regarding the constitution and a lot of uh, laws uh, being drafted there. I mean, if you look at the 35 years, we started here as, uh, as, as if almost an appendix of the government, starting mm -hmm. doing only government programs. And uh, when I say the civil society has matured, uh, we matured with the civil society because uh, the government uh, gave us much more breathing space in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Now we are in a totally new uh, new phase uh, where we have a new majority, uh, where it has become apparent that, let's say, two-thirds of the Egyptian populace uh, are heavily influenced by, by Islamic or Islamist thought. This, per se, uh, from a liberal perspective, is a challenge. It's a challenge for us, of course, because liberalism is an idea which uh, it's not very favorable of the mixing of politics and religion. Uh, mm -hmm. On the other hand, we are just in the process of also changing. I mean, Egypt has changed, and being here on a more or less permanent basis, we are also challenged with, uh, with the, the the idea of changing, of adapting, uh, and we are working out uh, programs which will include much more also components of dialogue. Uh, I think it's a big challenge also for us as a German institute to understand better what's going on in this part of the world. There's not very substantial understanding in Germany what's going on. There's a lot of stereotyping also. So this is uh, what we're working on. Uh, this is premature to say how this will work out, but this is an idea. So certainly we have changed. Uh, there are totally new challenges coming up. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, I should say it's, it's, it's very, very interesting to be here at this time of history. And uh, sometimes it's tiring, but it's worth the while. Mm -hmm. Dr. Minardis, uh, now Egypt is only uh, one of many uh, countries that went through the Arab Spring in 2011. Can you tell us more about the uh, foundation's activities in countries such as Syria, a country that's still going through its own uh, sort of civil war, Libya, a country that already went through its own uh, civil war, and countries like Yemen as well? I mean, uh, we're not uh, uh, around in all these countries, mm -hmm. uh, but we are around in, 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 in North Africa. We have offices in, 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 in Morocco and in, in Algeria and in Libya and in Tunis. I just came back from Morocco and Algeria. And, and the first thing you say that uh, all these countries are very, very different. I mean, the idea that this is the Arab world and everything is kind of happening, happening in parallel is, is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. it's the Arab world is just as, uh, should I say, diverse as, as is Europe, where you cannot com mm -hmm. com com compare Albania with Finland or, or Ireland with Greece. So, so you have all these differences. Uh, but in the end of the day, uh, we as an institute, of course, have our strategic objectives, and mm -hmm. uh, they are more or less the same everywhere. And uh, one of the important uh, components of our work, and, and this is very much appreciated by our Arab partners, is that we are networking them uh, in the extent that we invite uh, various Arab uh, civil society activists or members of political parties to workshops and conferences for them to exchange. And it's very interesting, let's say, for a Tunisian to understand how a political party is working in Lebanon, mm -hmm. or for an Egyptian to see how this is working in Morocco. Uh, for you would see, for instance, in Morocco, you have a rather sophisticated party system with the pluralistic elections. I'm not going into how, how, how influential they are, the role of the king, but you have institutions there which are established, which are also creating, in this extent, a certain political stability which does not exist, uh, for instance, in Egypt at this time. So, mm -hmm. so it's interesting to compare this. And I always say it's much better uh, to, to invite the Arabs, to facil facilitate the Arabs, if your aim is really to promote uh, the democratic mm -hmm. uh, uh, idea, that they talk to Arabic or Arab Democrats, then we somehow uh, flood them, if I would say, or, 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 or impose on them uh, people from Europe or from the United States or from other parts of the world who are culturally quite uh, quite far away. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the idea which we would call uh, South-South consultancies or South-South uh, 
uh, dialogue, and, 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 and this is, I think, uh, uh, also a very liberal <laughs> way mm -hmm. of uh, countering uh, this accusation that we're interfering, intervening, and we have a foreign agenda and all this. Uh, so, so this is what we're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Manadis, now going back to uh, this here in Egypt. Now, Egypt is uh, preparing and planning for uh, upcoming parliamentary elections. Does the foundation see uh, an opportunity, these elections being an opportunity to sort of uh, practically start uh, working with all the uh, liberal political parties and the NGOs in this process? I mean, the election are the heart of democracy mm -hmm. and the heart of the process. Uh, what we are not doing, what colleagues of us are doing from other institutes are involved in monitoring of elections. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we have been doing in other countries, speaking of Libya, mm -hmm. speaking of Tunis, of training civil society groups to then monitor. Mm -hmm. So one, one step before. Uh, what we would do is, uh, what we would do is uh, not in Egypt, because uh, there are still some discussions going on, but we've been doing this in other countries. We would uh, organize activities uh, for particularly young people uh, with the aim of motivating them uh, to participate in these events, uh, to, to run as a candidate. Uh, there have been some remarkable results. If you see that young people who run f ran for parliament are then actually elected in their early 30s, mm -hmm. creating a totally new political dialogue. Uh, th this is this is uh, this is what we would do. Um, I'm not quite sure, and we have not decided this yet. It depends also, and this is a very important point. Uh, it depends on what our partners want. It's not that uh, we are coming here with a set of of programs, and mm -hmm. we are then. No, no, it's actually right the opposite. We are being uh, asked by partners, uh, can you assist us in doing this? Can you assist us in doing that? And then we will study this and they will check this out and then uh, sometimes we actually come to terms with them. So at this stage, for various reasons, uh, there, is no, uh, there are no ideas uh, that we will, uh, that we will uh, somehow uh, get involved in such programs related to the elections. Mm -hmm. so Dr. Manadis, now after the giant 25th revolution, there was a very much publicized case uh, against uh, NGOs and civil societies here in Egypt. Do you think that now people are a little bit wary, or the foundation feels that uh, people are a little bit wary of participating in civil societies and NGOs? I mean, you are talking about an incident which was uh, highly unfortunate, mm -hmm. uh, highly unfortunate uh, for our colleagues. Uh, there were some American institutes and the uh, German foundation of the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung which was involved. The situation is too complex to put them into one pot. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm very happy to, 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 to inform you that uh, regarding the German foundation which is affected, uh, this situation has been clarified uh, when the Egyptian president, mm -hmm. Dr. Mohamed Morsi, recently visited Berlin and had talks uh, with the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel. This issue uh, was clarified and uh, the German uh, Konrad Adenauer Foundation has now been uh, given uh, a clear legal status here. Uh, our status is, as I, I described this before, uh, we have an agreement uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the Egyptian Ministry for Youth and we are cooperating officially with the radio and television union. So, mm -hmm. so this is a, a different matter altogether. Uh, but what you are mentioning, uh, this what in Twitter is called NGO uh, crackdown, mm -hmm. hashtag NGO crackdown. Uh, and the, the case is still ongoing. I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not over yet for those, uh, particularly Egyptian uh, uh, members of civil society organizations. Um, this case has, of course, had very negative uh, implications on an individual mm -hmm. level because uh, um, it was uh, associated, uh, it went hand in hand, and I must say so, with a very ugly campaign in parts mm -hmm. of the media there were some accusations that these institutes uh, are involved in, in spying, mm -hmm. are involved in, I don't know what, splittist activity, uh, a national security threat. Uh, I must say that uh, this is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. This is not appropriate. Uh, Egypt is, is famed for her hospitality. Uh, it has always been a country open. Uh, on the other hand, of 
course, it is totally legitimate uh, that the government uh, wants to know what these institutes are doing. But the way this was executed, I mm -hmm. think, caused a lot of pain and it caused a lot of anxiety, uh, not only for the institutes, but particularly for the dozens of Egyptian colleagues uh, who, mm -hmm. who joined these, uh, these groups. Uh, for the sole purpose of actually helping Egypt after the revolution and saying, listen, what we have to do is now we have to train our people, we have to activate them. Uh, and uh, I hope this comes to a, to, a, to, a, to, a, to a good conclusion soon and it's forgotten. It's not a bright spot uh, in, 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 in the official treatment uh, of, uh, of uh, these institutes. This was, should I say, one of the negative legacies of the, of the military rule following Mubarak's, uh, mm -hmm. Mubarak's departure from power. Mm -hmm. Dr. Manardis, uh, can you please uh, tell us more about the significance of the establishment of the Arab Council for uh, Freedom uh, of, uh, of Association? What do Arab countries necessitate to sort of promote uh, these sort of freedoms? This is, a, this, is a, this is a very good example of, of a project uh, which our foundation uh, was active in. It has come to an end now. Mm -hmm. It was a three-year project. Uh, it was actually done uh, in cooperation under the auspices of the League of Arab States, mm -hmm. of the Arab League as it is called in short. And the idea was to develop by Arab civil society activists and groups a set of guidelines which would then be used for establishing a legal framework for the association issue um, on the basis of the international standards. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are not uh, uh, arbitrary standards. These are standards all the governments of the countries which participated actually signed up to. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I liked about it, this was still before the revolution. The we actually managed to, to put into one room, uh, to one hall, uh, various uh, members of civil society, uh, people, some of them have become very prominent now mm -hmm. after the revolution, uh, political party people. Uh, also there we have one or other prominent guys now but also uh, the odd government official. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it has been uh, more or less uh, an exercise in theory, but then much of what we do is in theory, uh, because if you are talking about education and training, this is in theory. It is then up to the individual who have partaken in this exercise to then mm -hmm. implement what they have learned. Uh, and. Uh, uh, in this regard, uh, as, a, as a, the director of the foundation, uh, I am not sitting there and saying, hey, when are they changing the law? This mm -hmm. is not for me to say, but I'm happy when I can uh, somehow organize or help organize a conference where 50 or 60 people are assembling and they develop a certain sense of guidelines and mm -hmm. agree on a p certain sense of guidelines. And then eventually, if the historic moment is ripe, then implement this. Because this again said, what we are seeing here now in Egypt, and our foundation is only one out of trillions or, or myriad of activities, is you have a very politicized public. You have individuals with a very, very sophisticated understanding of where mm -hmm. this country should go. Yes. It doesn't make things easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it doesn't make things at all easier, but they have a very clear understanding, and particularly in the issue of freedom of association, it brings us back to the issue of civil society. There's this big debate. And uh, you don't have to be a prophet to say uh, when this NGO law is being discussed mm -hmm. and when an NGO law should be adopted, which is counter to the international standards, mm -hmm. you can be sure that there will be a certain sense of resistance. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, promoting liberty and uh, freedom of association is uh, one of the issues and uh, concerns that the country is going through phase. And uh, we come to the end of the first topic of tonight's day debate. Once again, I'd like to thank our distinguished guest, Dr. Uh, Ronald uh, Mainados, uh, the Regional Director of the uh, Friedrich Naumann uh, Foundation for Liberty. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us this evening. It was a pleasure. Thank you, too. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to uh, check out uh, this report uh, regarding a lot of refugees uh, coming to Egypt, and we'll be right back with another guest. <laughs>
Egypt is considered one of the major centers hosting urban refugees.